intrigang balita, Congressman Johnny Pimentel na visto ang relasyon ni Colonel Rina Garma kay former President Rodrigo Duterte. Secretary level to the USEC level, you must be very close to the powers that be. And in that case, you were appointed because of your close relationship with the former president. Uh, Congressman Pimentel. So Colonel Garma, I want to ask you again, how do you explain or characterize your relationship with the former president? In July of 2016, da pumunta siya doon sa opisina mo, nandun po kayo, nandun po din bumisita si Colonel Padilla. Hindi po ba? Uh, pasensya na po, Mr. Chair. Hindi ko po matandaan yung uh, instance na kami nagkita ni... Ano, ni uh, Commissioner Leonardo, remember Padilla. that you're under oath. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, hindi ko po matandaan There are two po. persons here testifying that you had a meeting in CIDG against only you. And yung isa, sinumpaan sa laysay pa. And kanina si Colonel Garma sinabi, indeed, you had... He, she was there. You, kayong tatlo... Ito, na lang ang pag-usapan natin. The fact remains na doon sa CIDG, Davao Station, nagkasama-sama kayong tatlo. Yung pong sinabi ni Colonel Padilla, yun din pong sinabi ni Colonel Garma, Colonel Leonardo, o Commissioner Leonardo Rader. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, ang totoo po, wala po talaga akong matandaan na instance that we, uh, together with uh, two of them... Totoo we... po ba yun, Colonel Garma? Sabi yun nyo kanina, it's on record, Mr. Chair, that Colonel Garma stated that she went to the office of Colonel uh, Commissioner Leonardo in the presence of Colonel Padilla. And it is on record. Colonel Garma, sino po talaga nagsasabi ng totoo nito? Mr. Chairman, can I interject? Uh, with the indulgence of Congressman yes, yes. Uh, Pimentel, uh, of SDS uh, Gonzalez, you are recognized. Uh, Mr. Chairman, based on the affidavit of second supplemental affidavit of Superintendent Gerardo Padilla, <coughs> pwede nyo bang basahin itong number five na salay sa inyo? Komsek, pakibigay lang po para yung tanong ni Congressman Pimentel malinawan. Thank you po. Um, excuse me, may I know who that gentleman is behind uh, Colonel Leonardo? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for the information of this uh, Honorable Committee, Mr. Chair, we have sent uh, an email uh, stating that uh, I'll be attending uh, with my counsel, Mr. Chair. Uh, so he is your counsel? Yes, Mr. Chair. Can you please uh, enter your appearance before this committee and please be advised that you're, you're only limited to advising your client his rights? Uh, not to coach uh, your client. Uh, please uh, enter your appearance, Attorney. Yes. Uh, good morning, Your Honors. Uh, respectfully entering my appearance as counsel for Commissioner Leonardo. I am Attorney Aguinaldo Sepner, Your Honor, from Scott Law Firm and Associates. Okay, thank you. Uh, please proceed, uh, uh, Congressman Gonzalez. Yes, uh, binigay ko po yung uh, salaysay kay Comsec para basahin po ni Chief Superintendent Padilla, yung number five. In number, in number five, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, bago mangyari ang pagpatay... Pwede pakilakas lang po, uh, Colonel Padilla. Bago mangyari ang pagpatay sa tatlong Chinese drug personalities, nakadetain sa nasabing piitan ay tinawagan ako ni Colonel Edelberto Leonardo at sinabi na pumunta ako sa Dabao si IDG Station. Pagdating ko sa station, ay nandoon na si Colonel Garma. Kinausap ako ni Colonel Leonardo ang mga 30 minutes at sinabi na papatayin na namin ang tatlong Chinese na nandoon sa Dabao Prison and Penal Farm. Mag-cooperate ka na lang habang kami ay nag-uusap, ay pinangakuan niya ako ng promotion. Thank you, uh, Colonel Padilla. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Congressman Pimentel. Yun po, pinabasa ko lang po. Mr. Chair, doon na nga tayo pinatatunguhan. 
Very important itong meeting na nangyari ng July 2016 wherein Colonel Garma and Colonel Leonardo and Colonel Padilla were present. Dahil dito na po nagawa ang plano istitahiya para patayin po yung tatlong Chinese prisoners. And that is why somebody is lying here, Mr. Chair. Ulitin ko po, Colonel Leonardo, ito, binasa na po ni Colonel Padilla yung salain, sinumpaang salaysay niya na nagkita po talaga kayo doon sa opisina. Pinatunayan po ni Colonel Garma, although iba ang version niya, pero the fact remains na pinatunayan niya na nagkita kayong tatlo doon sa opisina mo. Commissioner Leonardo, tanungin ko po kayo, totoo po ba na nagkita-kita kayo doon? Mr. Chair, gaya po na sinabi ko, hindi ko po matandaan na nagkita-kita kami tatlo doon po. Uh, pero si uh, Colonel Garma, uh, may mga instances na natanda ko nagkita po kami, Mr. Chair. So, are you denying that uh, Colonel Padilla was never uh, in your office? Mr. Chair, hindi ko nga po siya kilala, Mr. Chair. Sige. So, totoo lang po. Punta muna tayo dito sa pagbisita ni Colonel Garma. Sinabi po ninyo kanina, Colonel Garma, based on your statement, Mr. Chair, na bumisita po kayo kay Jimmy Fortaleza, nakaklase po ninyo sa PNPA. Dapat po lima kayo ang bibisita, pero ang nangyari, tatlo na lang po kayo, hindi po ba? Si Colonel Vilila, kayo at saka si Colonel Grijaldo ba yun? Yes, Mr. Oh. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, that was sometime in July 2016, hindi po ba? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, nung binisita po ninyo si Jimmy Fortaleza, ano ho bang pinapag-usapan ninyo? Kahit ano lang po, Mr. Chair. Um, naalala namin yung kadetship namin, mga kung ano-ano lang po. Random. After meeting with Jimmy Fortaleza on July 2016, nagkita po ba kayo uli? No, no Your Honor. Tinawagan mo ba siya? No, Your Honor. Babasahin ko lang po yung sinumpaang salaysay ni Jimmy Fortaleza. Nung bumisita si Colonel Garma, ito po ay eh, very clear na na bumisita kayo. Hindi po ba inaamin ho nyo yun? Yes, Ang kasama nyo si Colonel Bililla and Grijaldo. Ito, sa number four. Nung bumipisita po kayo, tinanong nyo nasa na yung tatlong Chinese na inakasuhan ng uh, drug, uh, illegal drugs. Hindi po ba? No, Your Honor. Jimmy, dito ka naman, hindi, Mr. Chair, dito si Jimmy. Sinumpaang salaysay mo to. Pwede kang kasuhan ng perjury nito. Uh, sinasabi mo rito nung bumisita si Colonel Garma ay uh, tinanong ka merong operasyon dito at nasaan itong mga Chinese, national, uh, Chinese uh, prisoners hindi po ba? Yes, Your Honor Yes, Your Honor At sinabihan ka rin niya na meron siya lang operasyon hindi po ba? Yes, Your Honor And then sometime nung August 8, 2016, Mr. Chair. Or prior to August 8, 2016, Mr. Chair. Tinawagan ka ni Colonel Garma at kinausap ka at inutusan ka na sabihin kakausapin niya si Colonel Padilla. Hindi po ba? Yes, Your Honor. At pagkatapos ng tawag na yon, pumunta ka kay Colonel Padilla at binigay mo yung cellphone, tapos nag-usap po sila. Nandun ka nung nag-usap sila sa telepono ni Colonel Garma. Hindi yes, po ba? Your, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ngayon, ano ba ang pinag-usapan ninyo, Colonel Garma, nung uh, na, nagtawag, tumawag ka kay uh, Colonel Padilla? Hindi po ako tumawag sa kanya, Mr. Chair. Your Honor. 
Colonel Padilla, uh, sinumpaan sa laysay ho ninyo ito. Uh, dalawang apidabit po na sinabit ninyo na uh, dito sa paragraph 5. Tumawag po sa inyo si uh, Colonel Garma at ito po ang sinabi ni Colonel Garma. May mga tao kami dyan na gagawa at huwag mo na questionin and whether you like it or not, we will operate and do not interfere. Baka madamay pa pamilya mo. In short, you were already giving instructions to Colonel Padilla na merong ang operasyon yun. What we mean by operation, tinanong ko na si Colonel Padilla niya nung muling hearing, ay papatayin niya yung tatlong Chinese uh, um, Chinese prisoner. Ngayon, after nung nag-usap na kayo ni Colonel Padilla at ni Colonel Garma, doon na pinatawag ni Colonel Leonardo si Colonel Padilla at doon na kayo nagkita doon sa CIDG station na kung saan sinabi din ni Commissioner Leonardo, Colonel Padilla, huwag ka nang makialam, meron kaming operation dyan. Hindi po ba? No, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, sa incidenting ito po, it has all the footprints, fingerprints, quote-unquote, so to say, of Colonel Garma. Actually, Colonel Garma, lahat ng utos, even to SPO4 Art Narsolis, nanggaling ho sa inyo. After ng meeting ho ninyo ni Colonel Padilla, ni Colonel Leonardo, ni Commissioner Leonardo, doon na nyo inutusan si Art Narsoles, who is very close to you, para puntahan si Leopoldo Tan at inutusan na patay na yung tatlong Chinese. Hindi po ba? No, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, there are one, two, three statements from resource persons which is under oath against the statement of Colonel Garma which is not even under oath. Sino po ba ang papaniluwaan natin? Yung nagbigay ng sinumpaang salaysay o yung isang tao who is always been denying of her involvement in this incident. It is very clear, Mr. Chair, that somebody is not telling the truth in this interpolation. And I believe that Colonel Garma, siya po ang nagdirektor nitong incident nito, siya po ang nakakaalam. He had contacts with Jimmy Fortaleza, he had contacts with Colonel Padilla, ito po ang mga sinumpaang salaysay. So I believe, Mr. Chair, that Colonel Garma is lying to her teeth. Yun lang naman po ang gusto naming malaman. Ito pa, Mr. Chair. Ewa, na-establish na po natin sino po nagsisunungaling dito. It is perceived not only in Davao City, but in the ranks of policemen among your peers, that you are very close to President Duterte. Is that true? That is their perception, Mr. Chair. Pero that perception is believable, Colonel Garba and Mr. Chair. Why? Yung pag-appoint ho sa inyo ng PCSO, hindi ho ordinaryong trabaho yan that you just go for a job interview, you just apply Uh, for a position. We know very well that the position of PCSO is a presidential appointee and we know very well in the government that if you are not close to that powers pabi, you will never be appointed. Kahit po wala ho tayong uh, application form, kahit po walang a job interview, pag malapit ka po sa appointing authority, you will be appointed. So yung perception po na malapit po kayo, 
Totoo po yun. Hindi, hindi, hindi totoo yun. Hindi haka-haka. Because kung hindi po kayo malapit kay former president, you will never be appointed as PCSO. Hindi po ba? Possible, Mr. Chair. Do you think, Colonel Garma, kung hindi kayo malapit kay Duterte, ma-appoint po kayo as PCSO? Hindi po mangyayari yung Colonel Garma. Alam ho natin, even up to the assistant secretary level, to the USEC level, you must be very close to the powers that be. And in that case, you were appointed because of your close relationship with the former president. Uh, Congressman Pimentel, if I may interject, uh, kay Colonel Garma, yung bang uh, pagkakataon na, di ba, uh, sinabi mo na inaplayan mo yung position Yes, Mr. Chair. Na as General Manager ng yes. PCSO. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, during that time, was the position of General Manager vacant when you applied for the position? Ano po, um, nag, parang there, there, there are news articles na So in other words, hindi yung siya vacant. Na tatanggalin na, uh, magre-resign na. Ah, so merong news article yes, na yes, tatanggalin siya. Yes, during those times. Who was po, the General Manager at that time? I think it's... It's um, General Balutan, Mr. Chair. I'm not sure kung natanggal na o there's an article that he will be removed. Gen General Balutan. Yeah. Yes, and, Mr. Uh, Chair. When you but when you applied, submitted your uh, uh, resume and your application kay Senator Bongo, eh, hindi pa siya bakante. I cannot recall anymore kung Anong... nagbakante na, Mr. Chair. I, oh. I'm not really sure of the date, but I'm very sure I submitted my application. That was November, mm. first week of November 20, um, 2018, Mr. 2018. Chair. 2018? Yes. But that time, have you already resigned from PNP? Yet, no, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, was... nag-apply ka as a general manager ng PCSO na wala pang vacancy yung GM position at nasa active service ka pa. I'm not sure if it is vacant, Mr. Chair, or there's an article that's gonna, it's going to be vacant. Uh, so I'm sure it's, alam ko po na ma, parang matatanggal na o natanggal because under investigation na po. And yung I kay have, General Balutan yung time. Yung position, okay. yes, Mr. So, Chair. So sa madaling sabi, Colonel Garma, uh, during the time, because you're not sure yet whether mata, kasi meron ng, I think, investigation nga, tama, no? Kay yes, Mr. Chair. General Balutan that time, uh, inaplayan mo na, anticipating na matatanggal si General uh, Balutan. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, is that a correct assumption? Uh, yes, pangalawa, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, you're not yet sure kung tatanggapin yung application mo as the PCSO General Manager that time yes. kasi ongoing investigation and you were still in active service. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay, sige. Thank you, uh, Colonel Garma. Mr. Congress Chairman. Man, uh, Pimentel. Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the indulgence of Congressman Pimentel. Yes, um, Congressman if Torres. I may be allowed, just a few, just to interject. Uh, Colonel Garma, may nakikita lang kasi akong mga inconsistencies doon sa testimonies mo. Dati po kasi akong gobernador at nagtrabaho sa lokal na pamahalaan. Yes. At alam naman po natin na hindi po na ipepuesto ang mga pulis kung unang-una, hindi po muna ito sinasang ayunan ng mga chief executives. Nabanggit po kanina na sa maraming palipat-lipat po ninyo ng iba't ibang mga pwesto dahil daw po ito lamang sa due to merit. This is a fact that you stated. Yes, Your Honor. However, the places that you went to are plum areas. From Davao City, you were transferred to Cebu City. Those are plum cities to be placed under your direct supervision and without uh, intervention or influence from those that decide, those are very difficult positions to, to attain, Colonel Garma. So are you still suggesting to this committee that it is yes, it is only because of merit, that's why you gained those appointments and not through personal relationship? Mr. Chair, I never asked for positions. Hindi po ako lumalapit kahit kanino okay. pagka Ay, okay lang pagkuha ng okay position, lang po, okay Mr. Chair. Kasi sa akin, kanina, nabanggit nyo, Colonel Garma, 
Ang pinakamahalaga sa inyo ay yung kapakanan ng anak ninyo. Yes, Mr. Chair. Kaya po kayo nag-resign. Yes, Mr. Chair. Kung, pi- kung pinahalagahan nyo po yung kapakanan ng anak ninyo, bakit po ilalagay nyo sa alanganin na sitwasyon ang buhay ng anak ninyo na wala po kayong trabaho? Kasi kung magre-resign po kayo, wala po kayong pagkakakitaan. Kung magre-resign po kayo, paano po yung pangsuporta ninyo sa anak ninyo? Mr. Chair, that is why I applied November of 2018 when the President announced that I will replace uh, General Manager Balutan sometime March of 2019. So therefore, yeah, I that know, that, that, the sign... that's what I'm driving at, um, yes, Colonel Garma. Chair. Yung po yung point ko. Opo. Kasi kung talagang totoo kayo sa posisyon na pinangangalagaan niyo yung anak ninyo, hindi niyo siya ilalagay sa alanganin. Yes, Mr. Chair. At tiwala kayo na pag nag kayo, which was a gamble, given that you had 10 more years of active service, which was a gamble, you were sure in your heart that you will not put the welfare of your daughter in any harm. Therefore, you applied for the position of PCSO. A position so plumb and so sweet that only the hand-picked chosen one of the president will be given. So, Colonel Garma, I want to ask you again. How do you explain or characterize your relationship with the former president? It is very professional, Mr. Chair. Very professional? Yes, Mr. Chair. So, meaning, in many times and many occasions, Nag-uusap kayo. May I be clarified kung anong pag-uusap yeah, yun, Mr. Nag-uusap. Chair? Only when necessary, job-related, Mr. Chair. Okay. That's it. That's, that's all my point, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to um, put that uh, in the records kasi lang medyo inconsistent ng yung mga nasabi po ninyo, Colonel Gama. Marami salamat. Mr. Chair, can I proceed? Malapit na ako matapos. There are, more, there are two Please more uh, uh, points that uh, I would like to uh, drive at and emphasize. First point is that there was indeed a close contact or several contacts between Colonel Garma and uh, Jimmy Fortaleza. Ang una pong pag-uusap nila noong July 2018 nung bumisita po si Colonel Garma kay Jimmy Fortaleza kasama si Colonel Bilelia and Colonel um, Grijaldo. Ito po ay inamin po ni Colonel Garma kanina po, dalawang beses niyo po inamin, na true, it's true that uh, nakipagkita siya kay um, Jimmy Fortaleza. At doon sa pagkikita po, sinabihan niya si Jimmy Fortaleza na magkakaroon po ng operation sa Davao Penal Colony. Yung pangalawang contact po nila nangyari po nung tinawagan niya si Jimmy Fortaleza po at nakiusap siya na dalhin yung cellphone para makausap ni Colonel Garma si Colonel Padilla. At doon sinabihan din si Colonel Padilla ni Colonel Garma na may operation doon at huwag sila makailam. Pangalawang beses po yon. Ang pangatlong beses po, tumawag po uli si Colonel Garma noong August 8, 2016, kay Jimmy Fortaleza. And then sinabihan niya si Jimmy Fortaleza, this could be probably after the meeting in CIDG Station, after the plan was hatched, sinabihan niya, Bok, ako na bahala. May mga tao na kami dyan. Probably, I assume, that this was after na nakontak na si Leopoldo Tan and si Magda Daro na patay na nga yung Chinese prisoners. So, there were already three occasions wherein Colonel Garma had a contact with Jimmy Fortaleza and personally talking to, he, to Jimmy Fortaleza whether on the phone o dun sa Dapicol. Ang pangapat po, nung Togos 11 na, Nung pinasok na po 
yung tatlong bilanggo na Chinese na para patayin, tumawag din po ulit si Colonel Garma, kay Jimmy Portalesa at sinabayhan, huwag mong pabayaan yung tatlong bilanggo, bigyan mo, alagaan mo, bigyan mo ng pagkain. So it's very clear, Mr. Chair, that uh, it was Colonel Garma who was directing everything to kill these three Chinese nationals. Ngayon, I'd also like to establish a point wherein doon sa apidabit ni Joby Espinido that during the war against drugs, there indeed was a reward system kung makapatay ang police ng mga drug lord or whatever na involved sa kaso ng droga, there was a reward system wherein binibigyan ang police na nakapatay ng 20,000. Now accordingly, nanggaling sa STL yung pondo na ibayad doon sa mga rewards sa mga polis. Colonel Garma, totoo po ba na nanggaling ang pera para sa reward system? Nanggaling po ba sa STL? No, Your Nung Honor. Nung kayo po ay No, Your Honor. Pero inamin ho ninyo na noong November 2021 and during your stint as STL, Ahead, nagbibigay po kayo ng pondo sa PNP, hindi po ba? It's on record. You gave 22 million pesos to, to uh, PNP na ang pera galing um, sa STL. That is um, uh, charged to charity fund. There is a board resolution and the STL IRR provides for it that uh, we provide a portion of the charity fund to the Philippine National Police and NBI for medical programs, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, prior to your stint, uh, Colonel Garma, yung STL operations po, sinuspend ho yun. But in 2019, nung umupo kayo, nilift ho ninyo yung suspension, hindi po ba? No, Mr. Chair. Well, on records, uh, nakalagay po dito, kayo ho nag-lift ng suspension ng STL operations. Ah, uh, yeah. It was lifted. No. It was suspended during my time, Your Honor, and it was lifted during my time, Your Honor. Bakit ho ninyo suspend? It was suspended because during the time when I assume as the general manager of PCSO, um, almost one half of STL agents po ay may utang sa PCSO. More than five billion. Pero kayo din po ang naglift, hindi po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. After the implementing rules and regulations was approved by the Office of the President, Mr. Sa Chair. Sa tingin niyo, Madam Garma, hindi ba kaya yung binibigyan yung pera sa PNP, sa NBI, ay nagamit as a reward dun sa mga nakapatay ng mga drug lord? Hindi po pwede yun, Mr. Chair. Kasi po, kayo na po nagsabi sa isang interview noon, ng income na generated sa STL and LOTO ay nagbibigay po kayo ng portion sa NBI and PNP bilang reward sa mga efforts nila na labanan ang underground illegal gambling and illegal drugs. Hindi po ba? No, Mr. Chair. It's not a reward, Mr. Chair. It's to fund their uh, medical programs and it's very clear in the charter, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I have no further uh, question. Thank you, Congressman uh, Pimentel. The next to interpolate is uh, Congressman Raul Manuel. You are recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, gusto ko lang balikan ang uh, nabanggit kanina kasi uh, kinonfirm ni uh, Superintendent Padilla na bagamat ngayon ay hindi niya naaalala na ito pong uh, karaw niya na si uh, Colonel Garma yung na-meet niya pero nang pinakitaan ng picture na kung ano po yung uh, appearance dati, na-confirm po niya na yun yung na-meet niya. Pero on the part of Colonel Garma ay uh, sinasabi niya hindi niya maalala kung ano yung setting or uh, exactly ay yun yung uh, kiniklaim ni uh, Superintendent Padilla may binabanggit po parang sa thesis or uh, ganun yung uh, dahilan. So, uh, ngayon po gusto nating uh, i-confirm po talaga kay uh, Colonel Garma kasi hindi po po pwede na 
yung isang event ay merong dalawang magkaibang interpretasyon na uh, Mr. Chair. Ngayon po gusto nating malaman ulit, uh, dahil nga kinonfirm na ni uh, Superintendent Padilla na si Colonel Garma nga, yung na-meet niya noong uh, August uh, 2016. So, uh, kinoconfirm po ba ngayon ni Colonel Garma na nandun nga sa meeting na iyon si Superintendent Padilla? Mr. Chair, I cannot confirm it if your question uh, covers your introduction before you ask the question, Mr. Chair, because that hindi po yan ang nangyari, Mr. Chair. So, ibig sabihin, hindi no, po no. ninyo uh, kinoconfirm yung sinasabi ni uh, Superintendent Padilla? Kasi po, ngayon sinasabi na po niya na kayo nga po yung na-meet niya. Hindi po lahat ng sinabi niya, ayun po ang nangyari, Mr. Chair. So, I cannot confirm yung sinabi niya, Mr. Chair, or Your Honor. So you stand by your original statement na uh, ang uh, pagkikita po ninyo ay hindi sa context ng sinabi niya sa kanyang second supplemental affidavit? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay, so I will not belabor that, uh, Mr. Chair. Kasunod doon sa pagiging general manager ng PCSO ni uh, Colonel Garma, kasi... As mentioned, matagal po siya sa Philippine National Police. And uh, nalipat siya doon sa PCSO. Ano po ba yung mga qualifications o skill set ni Colonel Garma na na-earn niya? Kasi hindi po biro yung ganun kahabang uh, serbisyo sa PNP. Uh, meron kang mga mahasang uh, skills dyan at kung ano man yung uh, networks or connections. Alin po doon yung naging uh, kapaki-pakinabang para magsilbi si Colonel Garma sa PCSO? Mr. Chair, I have served the government service for 20, 24 years po sa PNP. I was able to handle um, different kinds of people by ibang klase ng police at ang pinakamalaki pong nahawakan ko po ay sumaabos po na mahigit isang libo 1,300 when I was with Cebu City Police Office I have various training leadership trainings I have my masters I finished my PhD my foundation is AB Mathematics uh, Mr. Chair and uh, I think I also have the qualities I work really hard I, I study when I work, Mr. Chair. And um, my position as anti-vice gave me also an idea of how illegal gambling works on the ground so that if I will be given the position as PCSO manager, I know how to handle these illegal activities so that our product, the lottery product, will uh, be, uh, lumakas sa ground. Yun po, ang nakita ko na sabi ko, kaya ko. And aside from that, dalawa lang po ang trabaho ng PCSO, kako nga po. Lottery and charity. And I have this passion on charity. When I was with the PNP, marami po ako community relation activity at nakaka-relate po ako sa mga activities. Yun po yung nakita ko na sabi ko, kaya ko yung trabaho, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor. Uh, we take note of that, Mr. Chair, pero uh, no offense po dun sa ating uh, resource persons. Yung nabanggit po kasi na very specific yung tanong ko, Mr. Chair, which skills na acquire from being uh, of service sa PNP yung applicable talaga at uh, naging uh, valuable para eventually ay ma-appoint sa PCSO ang ating resource person. Pero generic yung mga nabanggit na sagot, Mr. Chair. In fact, yung mga descriptions like yung leadership, yung ganitong mga nakuhang uh, titulo, uh, marami din po tayong mga kababayan, Mr. Chair, na actually uh, can be qualified kung ganun lang yung uh, minimum na binabanggit ng ating resource person. In fact, uh, Ang dating pa ay parang minamaliit yung uh, magiging role din dapat eh, ng isang PCS o general manager na dapat ay tiyakin na malinis at maayos yung pagmanage ng uh, lottery sa bansa. Given din naman na recently may mga issues din doon sa ating uh, lottery, Mr. Chair. Kasunod, ano po ulit yung batas na dapat ay tinitiyak ng PCS o general manager na napapatupad? That's the uh, PD-1602, Mr. Chair. Ano po yung uh, 
other a, name nung anti, batas? Anti-illegal gambling law. Sa perspective po ba ni uh, Colonel Garma, Mr. Chair, uh, noong past administration ay uh, napapatupad ito across uh, agencies, itong anti-illegal gambling law? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, kung ganun po ang opinion ng resource person, Mr. Chair, I think uh, from the uh, series of hearings that we've had so far, kung uh, pagbabatayan po natin kung paano nag-proliferate yung mga pogo at paano ito naging uh, actually paraan para sa illegal gambling at marami pang mga katakot-takot na mga nangyari sa bansa, Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, hindi natin mapagkakatiwalaan uh, yung ganong uh, pamantayan ng uh, ating resource person. In fact, kung uh, nag-proliferate yung POGO, actually this raises more questions, Mr. Chair, kung paano din ba talaga pinagala yung PCSO sa leadership ni uh, Colonel Garma at paano uh, ito pwedeng uh, naging uh, konektado din sa ibang mga illegal activities as uh, brought forth by the questions of uh, Congressman Pimentel. Mr. Chair, uh, nabanggit din na uh, peaceful and one of the most livable ang Davao City. Uh, tapos, uh, in terms of the knowledge of our research person, kasi nabanggit din dati ni uh, former Senator Laila De Lima na bago naging nationwide ang uh, Oplan Tokhang, meron ng Davao Death Squad na nag exist para gawing peaceful yung Davao City, Mr. Chair. Ano po ang pagkakaalam ni Colonel Garma sa existence ng uh, Davao Death Squad at sa mga operations nito sa Davao City? Wala po, Your Honor. Uh, can you qualify po? Uh, wala kayong nalalaman or walang existence yung Davao Death Squad? Wala po kong alam, wala po akong nakita. I'm explaining my answer based on my personal knowledge, Mr. Your Honor. So despite po yung evidence, yung maraming ebidensya ng uh, mga ginawa ng Davao Death Squad at matagal din po na na-assign sa Davao City si Colonel Garma, tingin po niya ay hindi totoo na may Davao Death Squad. Ganun po ba? Mr. Chair, I do not know what evidence you are referring to. I am just speaking on what I know personally, what I saw, what I hear, what I felt. My five senses lang po ang ginagamit ko dito. Wala po akong nakita, wala po akong... I'm telling you kung ano lang po yung alam ko personally, Mr. Uh, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, hindi po pwedeng takasan lang sa pag-claim ng personal experience yung uh, ating mga tanong, lalo na nag-occupy po ng mataas na posisyon sa ranks ng uh, pulisya si uh, Colonel Garma. Uh, in fact, edi kung ano yung mga hindi niya na observe, ano yung hindi niya uh, mga nagawa, kung ano yung mga inustisya na napalampas dun sa Davao City, that can actually point to at the minimum, Mr. Chair, neglect dun sa trabaho or maximum ay pagkonsente o pag-implement mismo nung uh, inustisya para mag-create ng semblance ng uh, peace and order sa mga lugar kung saan siya uh, na-assign. Mr. Chair, as uh, punta naman tayo dun sa stint niya sa Cebu bilang uh, police director. Dahil nga dun talaga nagmula yung uh, or yun yung kung paano pinatupad yung war on drugs, no? yung police operations na actually ay katakot-takot, Mr. Chair. Ganon din ba yung estilo na dinala ni uh, Colonel Garma nung siya ay uh, na-assign na sa Cebu? Paano pinatupad yung uh, war on drugs nung doon na po kayo na-assign? Mr. Chair, during my stint as the City Director of uh, Cebu City Police Office, I intensified police patrol and community relations, Mr. Chair. Although there are also police operations that we conducted, but I am more focused, I was more focused on crime prevention, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, kasi kung pinatupad ang uh, war on drugs based dun sa uh, Memorandum 16, 
na pinermahan ng uh, unang police chief under the Duterte administration. Kasama nga po doon yung uh, sinasabing pag-neutralize ng mga pinaghihinala ang involved dun sa illegal drug trade. At uh, meron pong nag-testify uh, si uh, Colonel uh, Espinido sa nakaraang hearings na bahagi talaga ng uh, pag-neutralize ay yung pagpatay dun sa mga nililabel na mga drug pushers. So, uh, sa stint niyo as uh, Cebu City Police Office Director, ilan yung tala ng mga napatay na mga drug suspects sa ilalim ng inyong uh, pamumuno? Mr. Chair, may I be clarified on your definition ng napatay? Mr. Chair, ito yung mga... Supposedly, the police has uh, a record dun sa kung ilan yung mga kinakount nila no, as uh, accomplishments no, dun sa war on drugs. So, uh, yun yung ating tinutukoy and uh, supposedly ay alam yun ng uh, former uh, Cebu City Police Office Director. Mr. Chair, kung namatay po yan at pinatay, I don't consider it a police um, accomplishment. A police accomplishment is something that you can bring the suspect in para sa hustisya. Pero kung namatay lang dyan, we investigated it's murder. It's not even considered an accomplishment. It's murder, Mr. Chair. Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, it seems na evasive po yung mga sagot ng uh, ating resource person. Uh, consistent po dun sa paano tinatrato ng uh, dating administrasyon yung mga uh, ganitong pagpatay. Hindi lang doon mismo sa loob ng ating mga uh, penal farms, ganyan, pero maging doon sa labas mismo, no? doon sa ating mga uh, ordinaryong uh, kababayan. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, at this point, no, I would uh, end my interpellation and reserve uh, other questions sa iba pa nating mga resource persons. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Manuel. Uh, before the next interpellator, the Chair would like to recognize the presence of uh, Congressman Joel Chua, Congressman Raymond Mendoza, Congressman Edu Rama, Congressman Cutie Del Mar, Congressman PM Vargas, and Congresswoman Jam Beranda, ba Baronda. So the next interpolator is Chino. Congressman Chino Almario. You are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I'd like to direct my questions again to uh, Colonel Garma, if that's okay. Um, I would just like to pick up on a few points Muna made earlier. Uh, first, nung kay um, Congressman Johnny Pimentel, and another point that was also brought up by uh, by our colleague uh, Congressman Raul Manuel. The first is um, on the question of personal relationship to our former president. No, sabi niyo po, ma'am, and, and please confirm, na you did not or you do not ask favors from any political entity, any political figure, for the advancement or the enhancement of your career. Tama po ba yun? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. That being said, it was also, uh, Colonel Garma also mentioned earlier, na when she applied for her position, uh, for the position of general manager of PCSO, she approached then Special Assistant to the President, Bongo, for the transmittal of her letter to the President, to which she was given a reply na, babasahin ito ni President. Tama po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Chair, there is, there is still inconsistencies pa rin with the testimonies or the narrations given by Colonel Garma, and we would like to explore it even further. But to bring it back again to PCSO, so, even if, sabi nga kanina ni Congressman Jay Suarez, na to give the general manager position to somebody who has no background in that same institution is unheard of or unusual. And kanina, kanina sabi ni Congressman Raul, and I'd like to reiterate, what merits did you warrant to get the coveted position of General Manager of PCSO. Mr. Chair, yung pinalitan ko po ay isang general din po. 
Siguro din tanungin po natin, ano din ang... You know, then the chairman is also a retired general. Mr. Chair, Mr. I'd like to remind again our resource person. Uh, can yeah, we please? I, so, okay, I, uh, the yeah, question I'm was, so, what I'm merits sorry. do you think po? That's uh, it. I have, I have mentioned it already, Mr. Chair. Yung pong qualification ko. Mr. Chair, and then I submitted that. I applied for the position. I did not retire. Agad po when I applied, kasi hindi ako sure kung tatanggapin po yung application ko. Hindi kayo sure, ma'am? Bakit? Eh, Hindi ako sure. I, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not confident. I do not know. Maybe the president, it's it's the choice of the president kung sino pong ilalagay. So, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, pa I'd po like yung to, aking resume. Mr. Chair, I'd like to highlight that again. So, maybe the president, yeah, he will from still his choice. Study. Yeah, everybody knows it's the president your honor is going to choose. Correct. So, I submitted my application. And uh, he will decide whether I am qualified or I'm not qualified for the position, Mr. Chair. So I waited before I retired. So, Mr. Chair, let me again bring back to another inconsistency. Kasi kanina po, sabi po ng ating resource person na she relied on her merits, on her work performance, on her job to be able to get to where she is. And in this case, as general manager of PCS, PCSO noon. And now, our resource person is now saying that it is the choice of the former president during at that time to appoint or to grant the position of general manager of PCSO. Again, Mr. Chair, another inconsistency. And speaking of inconsistencies, para updated sa susunod na balita, mag-subscribe and click the notification bell. Huwag kalimutang i-like and share ang video. Maraming salamat sa suporta.